A new report from Building Research Establishment reveals that poor housing in the UK is costing the NHS 1.4 billion a year, with a further 2.6 million homes in England categorized as poor quality and potentially hazardous to those occupying them. York is one of the most expensive cities in the United Kingdom to rent in. There is a shortage of affordable housing. In September, Labour Group Deputy Leader, Councillor Claire Douglas told Bidia, I represent Hewitt residents. And some of the case work I receive linked to substandard or overcrowded council housing is heartbreaking. Today, I will be talking to Labour's housing spokesperson, Councillor Michael Pavlovic. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, William, and, and, and welcome to you and welcome to, um, to all your viewers. Um, yes, and thank you for that um, very accurate introduction. Um, I am um, Michael Pavlovic. Um, I've been representing the whole road ward um, in the city um, since 2017, and I'm the Labour opposition spokesperson for um, housing and safer communities. Um, as you've quite rightly pointed out, William, um, the fault of housing in the city at the moment is the responsibility of the ruling administration, um, and that is the Liberal Democrat Green Coalition. Um, I'm a member of the official opposition, and so obviously anything I say um, is from a position of not being able to currently um, develop um, or implement policy. But in respect of um, housing standards, and you've, you've made reference to housing standards, and you're quite, quite correct, it's not just Councillor Douglas in Hewith Ward. Um, all councillors um, where there are uh, council house stock are also receiving emails on a daily, weekly basis um, regarding the quality of their accommodation. There's also significant issues, it has to be said, within the private rented sector. Um, and landlords have a responsibility, um, no matter whether they're in the private sector or in the um, statutory sector to make sure that the accommodation that they provide is decent and fit to live in. And unfortunately, in all too many cases within the City of York Council's housing stock, that's not the case. We've seen in recent months, many, many properties in which repairs are taking far, far too long to be delivered and to be delivered at a standard that is satisfactory. And as Labour um, uh, member for housing, um, I've been challenging both the council officers and the politicians um, and saying that they, that has to improve. Um, this is not a satisfactory um, state of affairs and council tenants cannot be treated as second-class citizens in this city. So one of the things that I've been um, doing is trying to work out with officers how they can improve the time delays um, in repairs coming through. They say, and quite rightly so, that the pandemic has been a, a significant factor. Um, that staff have been um, isolating. But there's also um, the decisions that have been made by politicians and officers can only deliver when they have the tools to deliver that with. And 
we criticised quite considerably um, the February budget, which chose to reduce the amount of funding for housing repairs by over £250,000, um, a total in repairs um, across the board of over £400,000 this year. At a time when um, residents were coming um, to the council to complain to councillors and through the council itself um, about delays in, um, in repairs, that was not, in our view, the sensible option to have taken. And we challenged the administration to adequately resource it. Um, we've also challenged the politicians at, um, at executive meetings. And you may recall um, at full council, I quite robustly challenged um, and she was um, markedly unhappy with um, saying, you know, the bottom line lies with you. You are the executive member for housing. It is under your direction that this failure has developed and it's for you to find um, solutions for it. And warm words um, saying, yes, we understand things are difficult. Yes, we understand people are living in conditions that they should not be having to live in. Um, do not address the fundamental problem, which is that unless you resource um, housing repairs um, appropriately, you will continue to have delays. Unless you invest in the workforce um, that can deliver that, and the, the, the council is facing significant gaps in skilled trades, um, and they haven't been filling, uh, they haven't been filling vacancies. Um, I think they are now starting to do that, but of course, at the same time, um, we've lost a number of um, experienced staff, and that is creating a skills gap that is then translating through to repairs, and that is where the problems are, have arisen. There, there is a time scale by which repairs are supposed to be done, and that's not been that's been lost. Um, that 20 day repair target is now three months or more. Um, and that's not acceptable. So in a nutshell, my job is to continue to challenge the politicians, to say that they need to invest, to say that they need to take decent human standards of accommodation seriously and to give the teams, the work, the, 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 the housing repairs teams, um, the tools by which, and, and when I say tools, I mean the resource tools, not the physical tools, um, to be able to, um, to do their job as they want to do. Nobody wants to have to be telling a family um, with children that they're cutting their water off for five days because they haven't got the parts. Nobody wants to be telling people that the mould that they've got um, because of the damp in, 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 in their properties um, can't, be replaced, uh, can't be repaired for months. So the direction has to come from politicians, William. I, you know, I firmly believe that. And when Labour come into power in 2023, as hopefully that will happen, we will invest in housing repairs. We will make sure that houses are warm, decent, um, and of a standard that um, the residents should expect. Because these are, these, are, these are families, these are individuals, these are young children um, whose health conditions are it being exacerbated by the damp and the conditions that they're living in. That's not an acceptable scenario for anybody and should have had a much higher priority than it has had. My view is that the executive member has taken her eye off the ball 
um, and been focusing rather on um, on building um, passive houses um, when there are nearly a thousand homes um, of the seven and a half thousand homes uh, council homes that are in the city that are classed as being non-decent and they say well we've changed the criteria by which we measure decency but these are bathrooms that are old these are kitchens that are old. This is wiring that's not satisfactory. These are trip and fall hazards. You know, these are really significant features um, that people who rent their properties should have um, within their homes. So that's basically what I wanted to say about um, housing repairs. I don't know if you've got any questions that, that have arisen from what I've said. That you'd like to follow up on, on, on in, in with me. So what 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 are you going to say to someone who is uh, listening to or watching to this interview and living in waiting in housing waiting list for years? Maybe they're living in a sofa with their parents or their relatives, and they're desperate. It's too expensive to rent a house, and they 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 don't know when they're going to be housed they don't know what they're going to do they can't buy a house it's too much they're working class people they're working hard day and night so that's one and the other thing is can you give some practical example without naming anyone uh, that you help people to with poor quality of housing and how are you going to bring the change without raising the council tax in the future and where from where the money will come that's that's the question thank, thank you. you um so th there's two questions there and, and and both of them are incredibly important um one's the gap in the housing affordability and and the crisis that exists in york um for both people wanting to rent and people who are in a position or, or would normally be in a position to buy, um, but also in respect of housing standards. So just the, um, just the other day, you, you're asking um, a, a practical example um, of, of, of when a, a councillor can intervene. I mean, and in this case, it was me, but you know, all of my colleagues are intervening on a regular basis. Um, um, uh, uh, a, a chap rang, um, uh, wrote to me about his um, his bathroom um, and that, that had a significant leak and, and, and a leak in the toilet. Um, and he'd been um, he'd been facing the councils um, for I think when he first contacted me, it was nearly two months. Um, I. As soon as I received this, um, I rang the uh, housing repairs, um, and that's another issue. I mean, I was, um, I don't have a hotline to the um, to the council officers. I, I I ring the helpline just like everybody else, um, and so I can experience some of the pain that people go through. I was I was waiting for over twenty minutes to get put through, um, but. Um, but I, I, I raised it and I said, you know, um, this is a situation and this is the house, this is the address. Um, and was told, ah, yes, we did have it logged, but we didn't have it logged as a leak. Um, it's an urgent issue. Um, we'll get a plumber out um, within four hours. Um, so I was able to get back to the constituent and say, um, yeah, there will be an emergency plumber coming out uh, um, today. And, and that happened, um, only to then subsequently be told, uh, actually, um, the whole pipework needs to be replaced. And I've been given a date two months in advance um, for that to happen. So I was able to then um, go back and say, you know, the problem is that this hasn't been resolved um and the month you know there's a two-month delay and whilst 
it's not for me to say you need to prioritize this case because I'm a councillor and I'm I'm shouting the loudest because every tenant should have the right whether they go to a councillor or whether they don't go to a councillor to have a repair done in a timely manner. Um, you know, they did go back out to reassess that property um, and you know without going into a lot of detail that tenant now has a, a, a new bathroom new pipe work um, and it took a it took a period of time I won't I won't dispute it um, but they are now in decent conditions and, and, and you know they, they, they go to family group that um, you know we're now happy that this work has been done and that's the type of casework that councillors get involved in um, day in day out uh, and, and that's what we're paid for that's you know that's what we were elected to do to represent our, our our tenants not just in our own wards but also across the city when there are systemic problems that are arising it's our job to to flag those up and to flag them up publicly when necessary and you uh, you may recall that i i brought it up at, at executive i brought it up in house and scrutiny i brought it up um, in full council um, and bringing it to a public face um, I put out a press release um, which which the um, which the press took up you know that's the type of of activism if you like that um, both tenants and residents um, should be able to should be able to do so so that was that that was one piece of practical um casework just just over the last few weeks um you know i've been working with my colleagues because i'm obviously a housing spokesperson and saying to them please send me um please send me reports that you that you get from um, from your own residents and you know and i will um compile a um, a database um, that I can then go back to um, senior managers and, and assistant directors and say, look, you know, I've got these examples of, of cases um, across the city. Um, this is the type of issue that's going on and it's been going on for months and months and months. And, you know, tell me what you need and I will put the pressure on the politicians. Um, you know, I will agitate for more. Um, so you were also talking about where the funding for this comes from. Funding for housing repairs comes from the housing revenue account, not from the general fund. The housing revenue account um, sits, sits separately to the general fund, which is raised through council tax. And it comes basically from the rents um, that tenants um, pay and the service charges that tenants pay. And it's held in a separate account. And all repairs come out of um, and, and maintenance come out of the um, housing revenue account. Um, the housing revenue account, uh, I could go into a lot of technical detail about um, its debt and its debt cap. Um, it used to be held by the government. Um, the government then transferred it back into the, uh, transferred it into the um, responsibility of the local authorities in 2012. Um, and they have to now take on that government, that, that debt which was once held by central government is now held by the local authority. Um, and that means that um, it has to pay interest on the debt that was transferred to it. So that's that's one of the um, that's one of the cal calculations that um, the accountants within City of York Council have to make: is how much money can we put into um, into repairs, and how much money. Um, can we allocate to house building? And that then comes on to the next 
point that you raised, which was um, not just homelessness, but for those people that are on the housing waiting list, um, that are in unsuitable accommodation, or that need a house move on, that need um, an adapted property. Um, and we've seen the housing waiting list shoot up through the roof um, in the past three years. Um, and the number of people that are um, classed as being in the highest priority um, is over 700 now. The, these are people that are in what, what, what the council call gold band or priority one um, need for accommodation. And the housing availability isn't going to come close to housing um, those people. Um, 600 top priority gold band tenants um, and whether you're you know I've spent a I've spent the vast bulk of my working life working with people that are in insecure accommodation um, for um, 16 years I was a probation officer working with many homeless people then I moved to um, be the chief executive of a homeless um, a, 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 a accommodation provider. So, you know, this is a topic that I know a great deal about and, and, and I've had a, a, a great deal of experience in working with the most vulnerable people within this city. And I recognize that their situation is not improving it's actually getting worse and the housing market in york and um, there was an article you, you may have you, you may or may not have seen it today i don't know when this is going out um but it's monday the 22nd of november today um in the guardian um saying that in york um you're talking about over eight and a half times people's average incomes um, to be able to afford um, a home. And for rental, it's over nine times. That's the scale of the, that's the, scale of the situation um, that we face in York. Um, and people are paying the vast bulk of their wages, um in in rent in private rent because there's not not enough council properties and not enough social housing being made available and this is where i've got a significant issue with the housing delivery program that the council have adopted since 2018 i complained about it in 2018 i've complained about it every year and every month since um, the council say that they're, they're embarking on their biggest um, house building program since the 1970s. Um, I think it's the 1970s. I may, be, I may be wrong on that, but certainly for many, many years. Um, and on the face of it, 600, 600 homes over five years sounds fantastic. Um, and certainly a big improvement on um, where we've been in, in, in recent years, until you then start to break that down. Those 600 houses, 60% of them, are being sold at full market price. So they're not, for the, they're, not, they're not meeting the need of the housing waiting list. They're not meeting the needs of the homeless. They're not meeting the needs of street sleepers or sofa sleepers. They're meeting the needs of people who could already afford to buy from a private developer. And this is the council, the City of York Council, on its own very scarce plots of land, saying we are acting as a private developer. And what they're actually delivering is 20% social rented and, and that's council housing so the issue that you were talking about um those people those 
nearly 700 people on the housing waiting list, the people that are on the streets, the people that are sofa surfing in insecure accommodation. You're talking about 120 properties over a, over a five, six year period, and that's, that's going to drag. That, that, that five years is that five years got absolutely no chance of being met. Um, when they're losing more than that through right to buy. So people are buying their council houses um, at huge discounts, and, 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 and that's, a different, that's a different topic. And, you know, we may one day have a conversation about um, um, right to buy, um, but you're losing more through right to buy than you're delivering through your housing delivery program. So at the end of five years, you actually end up with less council housing than you had when you started. That for me is fundamentally, fundamentally wrong. Um, and what the council needs to have a policy of is creating far more social housing than it is doing. Whether it's doing, whether it does it itself or whether it does it in partnership with housing associations, that is the difference between um, um, the Labour position um, and the Lib Dems and the Greens. The final question. Is there anything you want to thank Lib Dem and Green Coalition for, for their achievements in housing sector? Uh, that they have achieved in last years? Well, I've pointed out there are many, many, many failings. Um, there are individuals um, that um, are willing to consider alternatives. Um, and, you know, and I do point to um, Councillor Benton, um, who is the chair of housing scrutiny. I'm the vice chair of housing scrutiny. Um, he and I undertook a piece of research into um, affordable housing, um, and we will be bringing that to um, the executive um, in December. No, in January now. It's been moved from December. It's, it was supposed to be in. It was supposed to be in October. Then it was supposed to be in November. Then it was supposed to be in December. Now it's going to January, um, and that is asking the council to have a radical rethink. Um, um, and also, he and I are about to undertake um, another um, piece of in-depth research um, into house, council housing policies and whether they discriminate against individuals with protected characteristics. Um, and, and he's he's been very willing to, um, to challenge the orthodoxy um, of how the council operates. Um, so, you know, um, credit, where it's, credit where it's due, you know, unfortunately he's not on the executive, unfortunately he's not um, uh, able to influence um, the, the funding decisions. Um, but no, I feel that this administration has let down the people of York, and I and I I can't I can't sugarcoat it, William. I'm afraid. Um, you know, in my view, as the opposition spokesperson, um, they have sadly neglected their responsibilities to the people of York. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Thank you. No, and thank you. Time. Thank it you. Was a, it was a great pleasure. Um, and, um, and, you know, I very much hope to be able to talk with you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.